Noel. Well, I'm so excited to be here with you, Chris Crone. I actually have been following you for very many years. You actually were one of the inspirations of me to take YouTube to a full-time level, especially as a real estate entrepreneur. So I'm so excited, first of all, that you're decided to have this conversation with me. How are you doing today? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you, Noel. Awesome. Awesome. So um, like I said, you were actually, I found you on YouTube many years ago. You were teaching on real estate and people may not know this, but you have an incredible video. You have an, a video called how to invest money in your twenties. That's yeah. over 6 million views on YouTube. Okay. And that was like, you know, just a powerhouse video. And at the time I was actually in my thirties, I wasn't even in my twenties. So kind of what inspired you to kind of start teaching people and telling about your story and, and kind of what was the origin story behind you getting out there and teaching people how to invest money and how to get into real estate? You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of creating value in the world. And um, I don't like being transactional. Transactional is I create value and you pay me. What's yeah. so cool about social media is I can create value for literally millions of people. And then maybe a handful of them will come back and say, Hey, I think you're my guy. Like, can I invest yeah. with you or can I mentor with you? And so yeah. it, it's actually a business model that I really believe in. I feel like I get to give a thousand fold effort out. And then yeah. I get to find a handful of people that I get to build business with. I love it. I love it. So talk to me though, about the investing in your twenties. How would you, what did you do in your twenties that made you say, I really got to get to people and tell them what to do, you know, early on and kind of get them going in the right I, direction. I think I kind of had a weird job when I was in college. I worked this telemarketing company okay. and they were selling these real estate guru packages and biz op packages for like, you know, Donald Trump, Robert G. Allen, um, you, you know, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Dolph DeRoos. And for me, I was excited. I'm like, wow, well, you know, I'm in college and I'm picking my career and I think I figured out what I want to do. I want to be a doctor. Okay. And within a matter of months, I figured out I do not want to become a doctor. I, I actually don't like chemistry. I don't like some of these science classes. I prefer math and statistics and other things. Yeah. And at that time, what was kind of cool is I was outbounding uh, these phone calls, thousands of them a year doing interviews, talking to people. And most of the people kind of fell into a very certain box. Mm. 30 years earlier, they had been in college. Okay. Now they were in their 50s or 60s. They had 401ks. They had IRAs. They had been trying to pay off their house. For the most part, they were fiscally responsible. And I got to see what the aftermath was after finishing almost their entire work career. Most of these people had a couple hundred thousand dollars saved up for retirement. Most of these people had maybe half their house paid off. Right. And that was it. And I was yeah. like, wait, 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 wait. I'm in college. You're, you're, you're telling me I'm going to get this job and do this thing for 40 years. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to wind up like my, my German immigrant father taught me with like millions of dollars. And yeah. that's when I realized, oh no, the hoax is up. I didn't, I'm thankful. I don't have to wait till I'm 50 years old, 30 years later to find out that this is a joke. Yeah. And that's when I decided I needed to figure out how to actually become financially successful on my own. Yeah. And the degree was just higher education to work for somebody else. It mm -hmm. wasn't actually something that was going to create freedom or liberation. I love it. I love it. So continue just kind of telling me this because this is super interesting. I did not know that. So when you were kind of meeting these people and talking to them and and obviously seeing if they wanted to be in these different coaching programs, like what what, what was like the light bulb for you? Like, uh, I don't want to be a doctor. I, 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 I want to do this real estate thing or this business and investing thing. Well, a lot of these people were working 40, 50, 60 hours and I myself, because I was a full-time college kid and I also had this full-time job, I started being able to appreciate how hard full-time was. And I was like, man, this stifles a lot of flexibility. This stifles a lot of creativity. You're telling me that someone's going to tell me when to wake up in the morning and then my prime time, the best hours of my life are going to be given to them. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to earn an income that is never going to be enough money for the life I want to live. So yeah. I just said, dude, this, this whole thing just smells broken. And that's when I said, you know what? I, I, I actually tried when I wasn't going to be a doctor. I looked at all the other degrees. I met with my counselors and I was like, shoot, like this just like 50,000 a year, $200,000 a year, $80,000 a year. This all sounds like middle-class broke. Yeah. And I wanted more than that. And um, I, at the time I was in college, I, I kind of had a secondary education going on. In the yeah. background, I had met three people that had each made over $10 million in real estate. And I asked all three of them to mentor me. One of them said no. 
Two of them said yes. And I basically started following them around, studying them, taking notes. And by the time I graduated college, I had figured out how to turn $3,300 into 25 properties worth $1.6 million. And by the time I graduated, I actually didn't have to get a job. My real estate gave me a six-figure residual income and I didn't need to work. I love it. I love it. That is so inspirational. It's so funny because um, I've watched some of your videos and I've kind of heard your story. I'm glad you were able to share that there because that is so inspirational. And I don't think that people realize that it is something that everyone can do. They always feel like, yeah. oh, no, this is only for the rich or this is only for the connected or this is mm -hmm. you know, who you know and different things like that. So let's talk about some of the things that you learned, because obviously you have another video, you know, how to teach, you know, how to invest in real estate for beginners over 2.3 million views um, on YouTube. So obviously, you know how to work as a real estate entrepreneur as a beginner. So what are some of those things that you did, some of the things you learned? You know, obviously, people can go watch that video. We'll put a link to it here. But what are some of the things that you like really learned and honed in to get mm. those, you know, 20 some odd properties? Well, the first thing I learned is that if you buy distressed property, that doesn't always mean it needs a lot of fix up. And so my very first home that I bought, I needed $3,300 as a 3% down payment on this $110,000 house that was worth 150. And I remember when I bought it, I bought it $40,000 below market. And in that moment, I'm like, I just this prior year worked my ass off and I made like 20 grand. So right. this is just by finding, I feel like a pirate. I'm looking for treasure. I was buried treasure. I found this house as $40,000 of equity. And I had just traded 2000 hours last year for my less than $20,000 a year. So I just thought this is fantastic. And I, 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 I put the down payment on it, but here's when the light bulb went on for me a year later, I used the equity, a home equity line of credit from all that equity had gone up and got a loan. And I used it to buy my second property. This second house was a foreclosure that was worth $250,000. And I had negotiated with this bank to buy it for around 160,000. Wow. And so all of a sudden, like, wait a second. I, I like, I just walked into, you know, all of this equity, ended up buying the house. I, I rented it out. I made $600 a month positive cash flow. And that's actually when my, my, my wife and I got married young when we were in college, she became a believer on the second house because she okay. said the first house, we have a basement apartment that is actually covering the whole mortgage. So we live for free. Yeah. The second house is paying us $600 a month. And we were still so poor that $600 a month and free rent was like- it was a, enough. <laughs> that was a big deal. So then yeah. I used my second house to buy my third house. By the time I bought these three houses, my net worth was over $200,000. Mm -hmm. And I did all that for 3,300 bucks. And I was like, that's house hacking. Yeah. And, and, and that was the first major thing I learned was this whole idea that you need money or credit to buy real estate. I bet it's a lie. I'm yeah. going to prove that it's a lie. I bet it yeah. can take little to no money. And, and that, that's been my experience ever since. I love it. I love it. That's what I said. I always connect it to, to a lot of your content. Um, I actually started more in the real estate game, the, uh, the correct way, I should say, with wholesaling. I got yeah. a coach. He started teaching me wholesaling. I did a deal. I got $5,000. I was living in my parents' basement. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, I like mind blown. Sure. And then I worked up to doing fixing and flips again, then keeping rental properties. But you kind of started with just keeping the property straight, buy and hold. And so yeah. where, how were you, what would, what did your mentor teach you? Cause my, I, again, I was in a different situation. I was broke, bankrupt, bad credit. Yeah. My mentor is like, you need to get some money, get your, get your credit fixed. And then yeah. we'll go from there. <laughs> I think, I think what was going on in my mind was after I bought that second house and it had a $600 a month cash flow, my wife knew that I had already been complaining about college. I'm only getting a degree. So my mother-in-law doesn't kill me. And furthermore, it, you know, I, I did not want to exit college and get a job. And so we sat down and she's like, well, Chris, how many of these homes would you need to buy to not have a job? And back then we thought 10,000 a month was like, rich like so, right. you know, <laughs> so we're like shoot if i just buy 20 homes at 500 dollars a piece uh, of monthly cash flow i don't need to get a job and and so all of a sudden the goal was these 20 homes and i had two of them so i needed 18 more and so i don't know i i think like getting a grundle of money like from wholesaling is like a really good feeling but for me i want a sustainable freedom yeah. And and uh, and so i wasn't interested in millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands all i wanted was enough to cover my lifestyle. So I didn't need a job. That was yeah. my motivation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, something cool happened after my third home, my, my father-in-law who kind of thought I was crazy for buying these homes, you know, I'm, I'm in college. He's like, you're, you're supposed to do the college thing and you're not doing it very well. Right. Right. And um, 
And when I bought my fourth house, I actually didn't have the money yet for it. I didn't have equity to pull out of my homes. And I remember he called me up. It seemed like out of the blue from a vacation after watching me do this for two years. And he said, you know, tell me more about this real estate thing you're doing. And I said, okay. And I told him my numbers and I could hear on the phone because he was in on the East Coast yeah. and I, I was in Utah. And I could hear through the phone, the scribbling of a pencil and the clickety clack of a calculator. And I was like, I think this dude is calculating my ROI. He's going to be impressed. And after I told him about the three homes, he said, what's your next move? I said, well, I, I found my fourth deal, but I don't got money. He says, I'll give you the money. Let's split the profits equally. And I was like, yes. Right. And we bought several homes that way. And then I was like, dude, why one father-in-law? I could have several father-in-laws. I started recruiting people. I started targeting people that are like, I'm looking for someone that's like in their 40s and 50s has been like a Dave Ramsey hardcore saver, the yeah. 401k mentality, the yeah. accumulator that yeah. is now kind of getting closer to retirement, doing the math and realizing, shoot, I don't right. got enough. Right. I'm going to help them put their assets into real estate where they can make some real money. Yeah. And I started doing that. And I basically, by the time I finished college, I had five partners and we were buying homes rotating every month. And that's how I got to 25 homes. By the time I graduated, I had a, it was like a $12,000 a month positive income. And I didn't need to get a job. So that was kind of like my first goal.